In celebration of the Independence Day season, I thought it would be appropriate to return to an old favorite of mine, a game developed by IO Interactive in 2003 by the name of Freedom Fighters. Now, looking at the front cover, you could easily have dismissed this game as just one of the many cookie-cutter war games that were tossed out during the 2000s, but Freedom Fighters has a lot more to offer than you'd come to expect. First off, the game is based in an alternate history, where during the events of World War II, the Soviet Union beat America to the punch when developing the hydrogen bomb, and consequently used it to put an immediate end to the war in Europe. This sort of power pushed the Soviet Union into becoming one of the greatest world superpowers and eventually has them conquering most parts of the world. This eventually leads them up to the very doorstep of the last haven for democracy, the United States of America. You play as a plumber, nope, not that one, by the name of Christopher Stone, who sees his humble blue collar life turned upside down when the Soviets invade Manhattan. With your brother accidentally taken prisoner, you start your path down the war-torn life as a resistance fighter against the communist invaders. The game plays out in third person, but with a few unique twists to it. This mostly involves the game's recruit and command system. As you start completing certain objectives, you'll gain charisma. This allows you to start recruiting soldiers that you can then command to help you in your fight. While you can only give basic commands like attack, defend, and follow, it's enough to really make the gameplay interesting, especially the more soldiers you get. Each level of charisma gives you control of a new follower, which maxes out at 12 by the end of the game. Eliminate everybody. Your team's AI is not always the smartest, but most of the time, they'll do a good job of taking cover and defending themselves in battle. For those less fortunate recruits that collapse quickly, you'll be able to use a health kit to bring them back. Take this. Or if you'd prefer, you could just replace them with one of the recruits you see hanging around. Come on, follow me. You got it. Unfortunately, the enemy AI are less intelligent than your teammates are, but I can assure you that they can shoot just as accurately and will definitely make you second guess rushing headlong into battle. <laughs> With a good range of enemy types such as snipers and light machine gun wielding heavies, you'll definitely want to do a little planning on how you approach situations. This leads into the game's clever level design. Your rebel base acts as a hub area, from which you can freely choose what levels and objectives you'd like to complete, with the ultimate goal being to take back each area from Soviet control. The most interesting part about this is how completing certain objectives in one area will affect the fight in other areas. That's where you'll need to blow the fuel tank. Just go through the sewer you came from. For example, destroying a bridge in one area will affect the amount of troops present in the other corresponding missions. Getting wiped out by that pesky Soviet attack chopper, then finding the landing pad in one of the other levels and blowing it up will prevent it from showing up in other sections. This approach to the level design is refreshing because it allows you to perform objectives in any order you like and gives you the options on how you want to approach certain situations. On top of that, the levels themselves are very open, allowing you to explore and find alternate routes to reach your objectives. Now, one of the most overlooked aspects of the game that I think deserves a lot more attention is the game's overall tone and mood. Freedom Fighters was developed by IO Interactive, the creative team of the Hitman series, and you'll notice a lot of similarities in tone to Hitman contracts which would release a year later. Both of these games' soundtracks were composed by Jesper Kidd, and in Freedom Fighters he does a really fantastic job of capturing that feeling of whatever you're doing in the level. Whether you're stalking around trying to get behind an enemy compound or having crown. just fought go, your go, way go. through an army of enemies about to raise your flag signaling your victory. He captures these moments with such a monumental sound that combines electronic ambience with a beautiful Russian symphony and it truly makes the levels so memorable. Oh. 
On top of that, the game offers up some really detailed levels with pretty impressive lighting for the time. And of course, towards the end of the game, you'll experience some levels with great weather effects, such as rain and snow. It never leaves the game feeling dull, and having replayed this again, it really stuck out to me just how impressive this game was coming out of 2003. Freedom Fighters also sports a pretty fun multiplayer option. Each player must pick either the Soviets or the Americans as their team. Once the game starts, you can capture bunkers and recruit soldiers to help you fight your opponent, with the ultimate goal being to raise your team's flag in the arena's flag post. Attack! Go, go, go! With your flag raised, a timer on your side will start to dwindle down. Whoever's timer runs out first wins the game. This is a surprisingly fun mode that you'll definitely want to try to get a couple friends together to play. Now, as much as I gush over this game, there are some things that aren't ideal, particularly when it comes to aiming. This game uses a soft auto lock, which becomes more accurate the closer you get to enemies. There is an option to aim manually, but you have to press and hold the same analog stick you use to move, which is very odd and honestly pretty useless. Though keep in mind I played this on the PS2, so it might not be like that on other platforms. Many reviewers at the time also found the game story pretty unremarkable, and for the most part I would have to agree. It mostly feels like connective tissue to create interesting company. missions to play, this which to honestly is where the game shines at its best. Can't risk sending in a squad. I'm afraid this is a solo operation. I'm gonna have to recommend people go play this game. It's great even for the modern gamer, and luckily you'll have a wealth of ways to play it. If you're looking to go collect a physical copy, you'll be able to find this for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. And thankfully, as of last year, IO Interactive re-released the game for PC on digital storefronts such as Steam, GOG, and Epic Games. Though keep in mind the PC version does not have the multiplayer, sadly. To make up for it, though, they do include a free copy of the soundtrack along with two unreleased tracks, which is pretty rad. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my retrospective on Freedom Fighters just as much as I enjoyed playing it. If you did, please hit the like button at the bottom of the screen and subscribe now to Rush Promoter to see more retro games. Thank you for watching, have a great day.